Welcome, adventurers. Here's what happened last time on the Incorrigible Party. Having a slumber party of their own, Falzern and Schaff discussed the list of priorities. Well, now that uh, Bryn's gone and Gozer, we got to keep in mind the uh, the ultimate goal here is the we still need to take care of these towers. Rest once again does not come easily, as the party is awoken in the night by two exasperated screams that ring through the jacked eel. Responding quickly, the party discovers Tolstov Melodin, the infinite hero, murdered in his bed, the alleged culprit escaping out of a second-story window. Giving chase to the streets of the Pisces Dock District, the party hits a dead end, their quarry's footprints ending in front of a 30-foot brick wall. Searching for a hidden passage, Falzern draws a wand from his pack. Oh, this old thing. Totally forgot about it. Um, so yeah, I, I think I just kind of like wave it through the air in a big long arc. And it, it activates. The wizard finds a hidden handle that causes a trap door to lower into a hidden passageway. Clambering in, Shaft gets ahead of the party, able to outpace them, having no trouble walking in the three foot tall tunnel. A tunnel that leads to a basement, and Shaft is able to get the jump on the person they have been chasing, shackling him before realizing he recognizes him. Dallin? Crawling their way through the tunnel and catching up, the rest of the party enters the basement. Shaft thinks quickly. I uh, sort of lean down to him and I go, You got yourself in a bit of a mess here, don't you? And uh, just say that quietly so they don't hear it. I'll go, Just play along. After a brief interrogation, it is clear that this man was hired to assassinate Tolstov. It appears that he was in the process of uncovering the entryway to another tunnel when Shaft shackled him. The party finds that this one leads to the ocean. A small rowboat is moored to the jagged rock formations at the bottom of the cliff the passageway is cut into. And as soon as we get on the like the rocks, the sort of the uneasiness of the rocks, and, and I'll go, MOVE! And I'll push him really hard. Feigning a fall, Dellen pitches forward, rolling into the boat, managing an escape despite some of the party members' best efforts to stop him. And now, on with the show. The party wakes up in the morning, and you retrieve your water-breathing potions from Campbell. And he does appear to be a little tired, as if maybe he's been up all night crafting or concocting these potions in which he's giving you, but nonetheless, he does give you a, a jubilant Alvidazin! as you depart. And down at the, the kind of the last boat, uh, the docks of Pisces, one of the few ships that is actually undamaged uh, after the, the resurgence of the juvenile kraken and, and its attack on the docks, you find the, the Rising 2. Its name kind of em emblazoned in what is clearly uh, very fresh paint on the on the side of it. And Grimby from the deck, he kind of waves you, uh, motioning towards his gangplank that's leaned over the railing of the ship, which you guys can climb up and, and get on board. Once on deck, you're immediately taken aback by this two-headed giant sitting on the deck. It's got kind of this oversized oar in, in each of his hands. I, uh, don't, don't be alarmed, uh, that, that just be stepped off there, uh, he, he a good crew member, eh? In addition to the two at a giant, you see, uh, Jerry, which you guys all, all recognize, well, except Mia, Mia wouldn't recognize, but the rest of you recognize Jerry. And there's another woman that actually, uh, Falzern recognizes. Falzern, you actually met her the first day, uh, you guys were in Pisces, at the Jack Deal, you and when you were inquiring about Erica's whereabouts, she had uh, survived uh, a shipwreck of her own from the Infinite Storm, and was saved by the Dorset Salvage Crew. So this boat, it's like 60 feet long, about 20 feet wide. There's this 30-foot mast that extends from the basically the center of the deck, the large uh, folded set of sails, uh, yet to be deployed. At the, the bow of the ship, there's this mounted ballista that actually Sally is uh, hastily attaching to the deck. As, you know, this boat didn't have any previous armaments. With the journey ahead of you, they 
prudent to uh, attach some just in case. And kind of off to the side of this ballista, there's like this set of uh, there's a, a wooden spool and with a large chain wrapped around it, and the chain kind of disappears out through this porthole set into the side of the railing. And then there's a large crank attached to this this spool that you would wind this length of chain up. Kind of to the the starboard side, there's two tethered rowboats. They kind of gently sway from their suspended position. These large thick ropes that kind of hang over the the, the edge of the boat. And Grimby kind of makes his introductions. Hey, uh, yeah. you met Der Stadtdorf here, but uh, there's Sally Dunshield. She she be the bosun. She keep the ship in working order. She she a good lassie. And of course Jerry, he be the navigator. Uh, yeah. What do you what do you expect us to do? I uh, just hope you sit back and enjoy the ride. We be in Heraklion, uh hopefully in the day's time. Right, we got like a quarter somewhere. Can I go take a nap? Even though I just woke up. I am afraid not. Just just be a passenger ship. She she's small, but uh, she be quick. Uh, what's the deal with the the two headed guy? Well, he'd be standing right there, so you could ask him. Ask him yourself. Hey, why you got two heads? Uh, what? <laughs> what? What? I'm sorry. You got to speak up, please. I can't. Hey, wake up! Wake up! This, uh, we, got, we got people on board. We got people on board. Oh. Man, it was my turn to take a nap, man. You, I told you about this. Huh. All right, huh. Uh, what'd you say again, please? No, I just uh, inquiring there about uh, the two heads. How's that working out for you? Mm. Uh, I don't know. I've been trying to get rid of this guy since I, we were born. He just keeps hanging around. I'm the brains of this outfit. What else can I do for you? I've never met an Etten before. This is exciting. No, is it's it- not. Is it no, really? No, it's not. Not, not. not this fool. He ain't no exciting one. I'm the good looking one. Look, look at us. Can't you tell us apart? Oh, Lord. I must admit, you both look similar. Are you guys twins? No, we were born about 30 seconds apart. My, my, head, got, my head got stuck on the way out. Yeah, that's his excuse. Always excuse. But that's all right. What are y'all doing on our boat? Well, it's not our boat, but that's beside the point. Ain't that right, Captain? Yeah, you should be me vessel now, I tell you. He's a good one, y'all. Just listen to him. He'll get you through it. Where are we going? We're going to Heraklion. Yeah, Grimby's this guy, uh, this guy, uh, row the boat? Hey, it would be the oars in their hands before, yep. Well, good. That means I don't have to do anything. Well, thanks. And I go over and sit down. You are aware of the possibility of running into the Kraken, right? Kraken? What we Kraken? We got some nuts on this boat? What? Kraken? Unfortunately, there seems to be a... I mean, thankfully, it's a, it's a young one. It's not fully grown. It is very quite small for a Kraken. Well, yeah. It, let's just say it, it's small for a, a massive sea beast that's intent on destroying everything that it comes across. Yes. So. Once you've seen one Kraken, you've seen them all. They all taste like fish. Well, when we heading out, I'd rather get this journey over with sooner rather than later. Hey, we've been ready to go. And you see kind of Grimby. He uh, takes his position up. Uh, there's kind of a small set of stairs leading to a top deck at the, at the back of the, the boat. And I uh, kind of grabs hold of this this large wheel and gives Stadtdorf a nod, sign to start the rowing, and he can set off for Heraklion. All right, remember, in sync. I gotta get it going in sync. You ready? One, two, three, row, 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 row. row. Okay, let's try this again. Count off again. We're we're Captain. We get this. We'll, it's not like we hadn't done this before. You ready? Let's go. One, two, three, row, 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 row. And after a few circles <laughs> you do around the harbor <laughs> of this dock, <laughs> the well, stat dorm is able to get the get the boat going and up to max speed. <laughs> so it is uh, quite a number of hours to Heraklion. There's basically nothing really for the party to needing to do to maintain the ship as 
the size of the vessel does only require a, a very limited amount of crew. Shakara's going to spend part of the time up in the front of the boat with her arms out, you know, feeling the wind, enjoying the sights. Great, and Jerry's kind of up there with you as well. He's kind of got the, the set of navigational tools out. And he holds you from behind and you just... Yeah, <laughs> puts his arms out. I'm queen of the world! <laughs> he's kind of got uh, a, a, like a nautical chart he's fiddling with and making sure everything is maintaining course. I'm going to look at his map and be like, I think that island is actually a little farther this way than what is drawn on the map. He kind of looks at you, he's... Twisted around, he was holding it upside down. He's like, "Oh, I, uh, I th- uh, th- thank you. Um, I, I, I mean, I'm, I don't really like boats. I, I'm not sure this is the, the right line of work for me." But uh, how are you feeling since your rescue? And he's still seeming uh, pretty skittish out on the water after uh, his uh, after the the original rising starfish went down, and how Captain. Grimby was able to convince him to join the crew is <laughs> yet to be determined. Any ill effect from the breathing pod? No, my, my throat's still kind of, kind of sore from that, that tentacle that you pulled out of it, uh, kind of scabbing over on, on the back of my neck from, from the pinpricks from the tentacles. Uh, I just, maybe once in Heraculeon I can settle down and, and find, a, find a new line of work, maybe. That sounds wonderful. And Sally is, the whole time, she's kind of flitting around, and she's now secured the the ballista to, to the deck, and in its own little housing, what would be the equivalent of, like, a giant quiver for these huge ballista bolts is this, the ballista is like this oversized crossbow, it takes up almost uh, the same amount of space that Statdorf does. She's just making sure the, the bolts are secured next to it, and within easy reach, and she goes over and checks on, on the the rowboats, and she gives Valzer a nod as she does recognize you, Valzer, from the, the brief moment that you spoke. She makes sure, you know, the, these rowboats are secured and aren't going anywhere. I sure hope we don't have to make use of that of that oversized crossbow there. I was going to walk over and just sort of stand in front of uh, Statdorf and uh, just look at him for a few minutes. And we'll go, how do you decide who eats what? Well, when we go somewhere, he orders one thing, I order one thing. We got two separate mouths, buddy. Yeah, but you only got two arms. So, like, does that arm feed that mouth and that arm feed that mouth? Or do you you cross over? I'm left-handed on the left side. He's right-handed on the right side. We got to do our own thing. But it all ends up in the one tummy, so it all tastes good no matter what we want. And it all comes out one place, too. But we won't talk about that right now. So who has to wipe? We, <laughs> well, you know, it's whoever's closest to the leaf. You know, you got you got to get that leaf. But, you know, sometimes <laughs> since we're on this boat, we just stick that big old arse down in the water and let it clean itself. Mia, after saying that, regrets it, and she's just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't, it just, it just came out, I didn't mean to. No, that was a good question. Stop looking at us, would you people do what we're here? We got some other business to take care of. Ain't that right, Captain? Hey, that'd be great. Yeah, come on, guys, this, this isn't a circus, uh, a circus act here for you to, you know, show, show these kind young giants here a bit of respect. No, I don't mean any disrespect, I just, I'm trying to learn something here. Mia looks over at Falzerin and asks, When was the last time you got in touch with the Tritons? I mean, how do you know that they'll be able to get our message? Well, Mia, it's always... I've always had success in the past. It has been a while, years, um, since I've contacted them, but... Years? I've never failed to be able to reach them before. I haven't had much reason to get... um, to reach out to them. It's sort of a line of contact that I have should anything bad happen that I need to call for their help or advice. But you are certain you can contact them? That they will get the message? Yeah, it's always worked before. So once you let them know what's going on, then uh, then we can go go back to the mainland, right? I, 
I don't know, Shaft. Um, I, I do know they're a, a very powerful race, and I'm, I'm hoping they'll be able to deal with this Kraken. And the little luck, they won't need our help because uh, I don't like the looks of this thing. It's huge, even yeah. for being as young as it is. Yeah, I'm with you. Shaft, you look so tiny standing next to the Etten. Falls are in kind of snickers. I sort of look up. Yeah, he's pretty big. Hey, what do you do if you find a girlfriend or something? I mean, what if one of you likes and the other one doesn't like? All right, this is getting a little personal for somebody I just met, all right? <laughs> well, I'm just curious. It's had, it's had to have come up at some point in time. I'm going to, like, push Shaft back. <laughs> just go over here. Okay, I'll walk away. You know you were asking us about that wiping thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm seeing something I can use right about now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get awful grumpy in a minute. Now, you just... <laughs> Well, let's go kill us. I need some sushi. Let's go get us a Kraken. <laughs> okay, I, wa I walk away. <laughs> a few hours into this journey, as it's, it would take, it takes about 10 to 12-ish hours to get to Heraklion from Pisces. But about halfway, what a stat door's oars smacks hard into something as they finally gain, finally gained their rhythm and <laughs> really started going for the last few hours. Stat, what, Stat, what the heck you hit? Uh, I don't know, something got stuck. Something large pounds against the side of the ship, rocking the entire boat. Could everybody but Stat Dwarf make me dex checks to keep your footing? Hey, Captain, I think we're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's 17 for Falzern. 19 for Mia. That's an 8 for Shaft. 19 for Shakara. So everyone manages to keep their footing and accept Shaft as he kind of f is knocked on his ass and slumps prone and slides a few feet across the deck. He slides and ends <laughs> up between the end's legs. <laughs> <laughs> the boat kind of starts to settle uh, as well and, and doesn't seem to be any sign of anything uh, immediately of what hit the boat. I will run to the side that got hit and look down. Yeah, can I do a perception or something? Anybody that wants to look can go ahead and make a perception check. Falzerin's going to run to the other side of the boat, seeing that everyone is running to the one side in case it's, you know, moved underneath us. Okay. My perception was 21. I have a 19. 14. 18 for Falzerin. So everybody on the uh, the right side of the boat, which is starboard. Yeah, everybody on the, on the star, everybody's checking starboard. Uh, this is kind of where the, the rowboats are suspended. You see kind of this shadow underneath the waves move below and beneath the boat and falls there and you see it uh, come out on the other side and it kind of moves away from the boat and continues and disappears b below the waves as it seems to submerge deeper into the water. Okay, so it's not, I think it goes down instead of, like, farther away from us. It's, it's sinking deeper rather than moving. That's right. Okay. Would, would this shadow be on similar scale of the Kraken that we did see, or is it... Actually, it is much larger than the Kraken that you saw. Of course it is. Perfect. Was that the Kraken that just hit us? It looks huge, Shikara. I don't... If that's the Kraken, it's grown. That's much bigger than the one we saw. It's probably a whale or something. Let's hope so. Would Shikara know of anything out there in the ocean that big, whale-wise? Why don't you make a, uh, a nature check? I guess Falsey would have some experience with the ocean as well. Do you want me to? Sure. 18. Uh, 21 for Falsey. Yeah, you both know that there are certainly creatures that are natural, that naturally habitate the ocean that are, are larger than the juvenile kraken that you saw. The shadow was very large, though. Uh, how much bigger it was the shadow than when the when we originally saw the kraken? The brief glimpse you got it was near, uh, nearly four or five times longer than the kraken. Oh crap! Well, guys, it, it it seems like it it dove down deeper. Hopefully, this was just a big whale or something that bumped into us and is 
is on its way. It might not have even noticed us. Yeah. Whatever it was, it was huge. Hey, uh, Stadtdorf, why don't you pick up the pace a little bit? You got it, brother. Both of you. Wake up! We're supposed oh, to start oh. rolling again. All right, here we go. Captain, here we go. We're ready to go. Let's go. One, two, three. Stroke. I think I just had one. <laughs> <laughs> If you had a stroke, would his face droop? <laughs> <laughs> Did I smell burnt toast? <laughs> hey, uh, there doesn't seem to be nothing else we can do for the shadow here. We should keep on going. If he'd return, we, we defend ourselves best we can. I'm going to be constantly watching down into the water. Yeah, Mia's going to be vigilant with her hammer in her hand just... Ready to go. I look over to Sally and and kind of make sure she's manning this ballista and looks like she's ready. Hey, is there a, a little crow's nest up on the top of the uh, mast? There is not. You could probably still climb up there, though. You're tiny. Yeah, I think I will. Is there, is there like uh, ropes that are sort of like a net off to the side hanging down on the ship? Uh, there isn't really. You could attempt to climb up the pole. Like, this mast isn't large enough to have any rigging that needs to support it as it's only really a single sail just because of the size of the boat but you could certainly try to climb up there as there is you know a crossbar that runs forming like a T for this mass right which the bottom of the sail attaches to you could you could certainly try to scramble up yeah I think I'm gonna like try to tie myself on a little bit and then work my way up see if I can get up towards the top to get a better view over see if I can see anything that shadow out on okay Go ahead and uh, make an acrobatics then. Oh, I'm good with that. So that's a uh, 21. You definitely are able to get. You want to go right to the top of this 30 foot mast? Yeah, I'm just gonna as I go up, look around and see if I see that shadow or any movement out on the water. Uh, not a problem. And as I stated, like the the sails have yet to be unfurled. Right, currently the boat is strictly being powered by Stadtdorf, being rowed by Stadtdorf. So there's nothing that really obscures your vision as you climb and get up. And up there, why don't you make me a perception check? 17. You do see about two or so hundred feet away from the boat another sighting of something beneath the waves. Seems to be keeping its distance, maybe traveling parallel with your boat. What do you see up there, Shaft? That thing we saw, that shadow... It's right over there, about a couple hundred feet out, out that way, sort of following along with us. I'll run to that side of the boat and look out. Mia follows. And yeah, so Shaft spots it on the opposite side of the boat that Mia and Shakara had first checked, kind of where Falzer and saw it pass under and then disappear again. And kind of though from your vantage point on the deck, it's uh, a little too far away for you two to spot the shadow itself, just... The, the added height giving Shaft uh, the advantage on, on being able to detect it. Why don't you uh, turn that ballista over that way and we'll just keep on moving. If he starts coming this way, maybe we'll have to well, Shaft, be prepared. I, I don't think we should, you know, uh, until we know that it's hostile, we shouldn't provoke it. Oh, I'm not saying to shoot it. I'm just saying be ready to shoot it. I think Falzerin's going to, he's a little bit weary of what's going on here. He's going to cast Mage Armor on himself. So yeah, Sally, uh, taking Shaft's advice, uh, pulls out one of these big ballista bolts and loads it in, kind of cranks the, the, the firing mechanism back and takes aim in the, in the general direction that Shaft is kind of pointing to and, and just maintaining a, a, a bit of a, a guard here on the uh, horizon of the, the water. And uh, are you going to stay up there for the rest of the journey, Shaft, or...? I'm going to latch myself on for a while, and, and if it starts getting closer, then I'll make the decision if I want to get down. And Shakara and me, are you maintaining your position on, on the port side of this boat? Yes, I'm going to keep watch. I'll just keep looking wherever Shaft says it is, yeah. And Shaft, you're up there for another number of hours, and very quickly, though, as, as they pass, like the Isle of Heraklion comes into view, and it just gets larger and larger kind of directly in front of you is now the shadow is keeping its distance off to to the boat's left to to to, to port and heraklion is is quite close 
only a few miles away before the shadow starts to move back towards the boat, towards the rising two. Hey, it's coming in. It's getting closer. Yeah, there's Heracula on. If we just speed it up a little bit, we might be able to make it there. Are you climbing down, Chef? Yeah, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna come down. How big is this shadow in comparison to our boat that we're on? Is it about the same size, bigger, smaller? It's nearly twice the size. Mia is very scared, but trying to act very brave. Hey, Statdorf, you guys ever kill a kraken before? Well, no, not exactly. We've uh, we've tangled with one before, but uh, you don't want to really mess with those things if you don't have to. Yeah, our last captain, and I emphasize last. He he thought it'd be a good idea. Good, you you might get another chance here to to say hi to one. I'd prefer not to. Uh, Captain, uh, is there anything we could do to avoid this thing? I think you could double your speed. I was talking to my captain. Hey, <laughs> we got two heads, not four arms. Figure this one out. This may not be a kraken. There are other things in the ocean of this size. You keep telling yourself that, Missy. I wouldn't know. It's pretty big, Shakara. I would prefer for it to not be a kraken. I'd prefer not to be out on this ocean, keeping you people going towards an island, too. But I'm out here, ain't I? The quicker we get to this island, let's go. Are there any more oars on board? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oars, yeah. Oars to help row. Hey, we can drop the mainsail. That should pick up our speed. Well, that's a brilliant idea, Captain. About time you had it. <laughs> hey, this is insubordination, I tell you. This new crew I got, I, I don't know what to do with it. And uh, he kind of motions to, I guess, Shaft, you're kind of at the bottom of this. What what the hell is this thing called? Mast. The main mast. At the, you're at Shaft at the bottom of this main mast. He kind of points. There's just like this... Um, Rope? Yeah, exactly. It's kind of tied around <laughs> this, this cleat. <laughs> And we're in a what boat? <laughs> and on the what ocean? Yeah, there's also uh, that wet substance around you. And... <laughs> Pee. <laughs> Sorry about that. I had... <laughs> Chef's already peed himself. Hey, Stat. Stat. Yeah. Is that one character over there kind of glowing and twinkling? Like he's got some type of fishy armor on or something? What is that? I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know. I just keep rowing. Okay. The hell are you two talking about? I uh, got. No, uh, that one guy over there. He said. He said something about armor, and he's glowing. It looks like he's glowing. Maybe I'm just seeing something. Uh, he's in your party over there. Some wizard-looking dude. That elfy-looking dude. Yes, Fulzerin just cast a spell upon himself. Do y'all he... not see that glow? gets hurt quite often. Yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly quite as good in the constitution department as as you fine as big anyone. gentleman. Oh, I thought that he saw the Tritons. Dang it, it was just Falzerin. So I've got to use a little bit of magic to, to give myself a bit of a strength buff. Oh, okay. Well, Stat here, he just, you know, takes a little ale, a little mead. He's, he's big and strong. I see that. It's very impressive. Have we got that sail down yet? I'm tired of rowing. I grab the rope, untie it, let it go. Just to, I assume it's going to open the sail. I have no idea. <laughs> yes, it, uh, it does unfurl the sail. And you see the, the little bit of wind out here immediately is picked up by the sail and the boat kind of lurches forward. And then the shadow, the last and continuing to come towards you, it looks like it's picking up speed. It's getting faster and faster. As it gets larger, it looms towards the surface and is causing these waves to, again, rock and, and hit your boat. And it kind of veers around you and, and bumps you again, bumps the ship with it, with like far superior maneuverability than what a normal ship would have. It kind of veers, loops around you and shoots out ahead of you 
and spins almost on like a dime and rising to the surface nearly a hundred feet away from you the bow of this unnatural ship it's like this large oval shaped almost like a like a seed kind of it's very smooth the the front of it begins to open like it's it's uh, segmented like in half lifting upwards like like a clamshell would to reveal this inner deck and shaft you immediately recognize standing on this deck is is surma she's kind of next to uh, this uh, another figure and the the bloated gray undead skin of the the drowned these these zombies that you guys have fought quite a few of is now wholly familiar it's it, this one though is different than what you've fought before its upper body is uh, like a normal human but its legs they they've deformed and they've been split into these these four like shadowy tentacles that the, this creature it kind of appears as if it, it's floating extending to Surma's left and, and right that line the deck of this newly revealed ship are three uh, three cannons on either side of her, so six in total. Uh, each cannon is, is manned by two more of, of the drowned. The, these ones recognize, you've seen these, these ones before, they're kind of shoulders covered in growths of, of barnacle. And the, the barrels of these cannons, they're glowing this, this deep aqua. Surma raises this turquoise colored hand, kind of holding it up in the air for a brief second before bringing it, slashing through the air, ending the arc with an arm extended towards the rising two. And you see the drowned activate these cannons and there's this, this silent discharge of light as the cannons fire a liquid projectile in a, in a high arc. Five of the projectiles, they hit the deck around you and they slosh like it forming like a puddle of water. The six shot splashes against Jerry and it knocks him to the ground. He coughs up a spout of blood as the liquid it pulls itself together, forming a, a solid shape around two large fangs embedded into the center of Jerry's chest. Eight spindly legs sprout from a rounded, segmented body taking the form of a giant wolf spider. And it, its body, it shimmers as it pulls its fangs from the now dead Jerry. You bastard! <laughs> I told you no spiders. Dude. I know, I couldn't even, I could barely get that through that with a straight face. Simultaneously, another uh, wolf spider reconstitutes on the deck. And the two remaining pairs of puddles, they slide together to form a slick looking spider that's more than twice the size of the the wolf spiders and we can roll initiative and these are made of like a liquid still or are they a solid they appear they formed solid falzerin's got a nine 21 i have an 18 14 uh so 15 okay first uh mia you are up first okay so mia within a split second reaches up to her amulet around her neck she chucks it down on the floor, just rips it off, and she holds her hammer up right over her head to the sky. The hammer summons a few lightning bolts from the sky, and Mia sprouts wings, and she begins to fly. What? What? Ooh. So I don't think that I change much in my appearance, except for that my eyes are now pupilless and they're glowing, like a topaz color. And um, my amulet kind of was helping hide me to appear more human. And I'm now revealing myself as an Asimar. Oh. So you're like, like a minor deity almost, like sort of like a, an angel slash human. I'm a protector Asimar. In the heat of battle though, so I chuck my necklace down and I fly, does that, is that my full action, Leland, or do I also get an attack? Falzern is in awe right now and just like actually distracted from the battle by how fascinated he is by this. Yeah, Shakara's uh, mouth agape at this as well. Okay, there's spiders here. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't like spiders. We're going to do, hey, let's drop these oars, get our 
weapons ready to go. I'm Just hold on, hold on. We will. No, a I'm second. not holding on. It's time to kick some spider butt. <laughs> it's a bonus action, Elena. It's a bonus action. Okay. So those three spiders on the boat are like spread out amongst everybody. Four. Four spiders. Oh, jeez. So Mia up in the air with hammer in the sky. She flies like 30 feet up, her large wings flapping, hammer drawing lightning. She just chucks her hammer at the biggest spider. My attack roll is 28. Oh, yeah. Damn. That's 11 damage. So you are, you've now taken flight and what, you're like hovering above the deck now? I'm I'm hovering. I'm like you said the mast was like thirty feet, so I'm like up by the mast hovering over the boat. And my hammer's gonna stay down by that big spider for the time being. Now on this boat, this this newly surfaced boat, you see the, the pairs of drown on each cannon. Both of them now are are fiddling with you see one of them kind of spin a section of it near the, the rear of the cannon. Like as if it's like a dial around the the circular uh, portion of the cannon, and three of them begin to glow red. Two more glowing the same aqua, and one begins to glow white. Uh, Shaft, you're up. Well, I'm going to try to get work my way up to the uh, ballista, but there's some spiders there, so I think the first thing I'll do is I'll cast Hunter's Mark. Put it on the spider closest to the ballista, and then I will do my attack. I'm going to pull out my my rapier and my cutlass. First attack, be a twenty. So as your first attack lands, you s- strike true. Its body it shimmers again, and your sword passes right through it as if it's water. And it then kind of reconstitutes and takes a, a solid form. Do I roll damage? Not for the first one, no. Okay. So I I see this as I poke through it, and then I'm sort of a disbelief, so I'm going to whap at it again. And that's a 18 to hit. You do find it's solid for your second strike. So that is nine points of damage, and I'll move up to it. Now on on the the deck of this other boat, again, you see the the drowned with the the tentacle legs. Surma kind of... See your cock her head towards it and then speak and it just takes a step off deck and just plunges into the water. Statdorf. So Tony, there's a there's a spider, big spider right behind us. Do you want to go after it or something else? Oh, we're big. Let's go after the big boy. Oh, come here, little spider. Come here. You're going to get a butt whooping right now. Ooh, morning star plus, ooh, plus seven. Sweet. Okay, here we go. That is an 11 plus 7 is for an 18. That's a hit. And then we got a 9, 9 plus, well, it's not uh, 9 plus 5 on hit, but it's piercing damage. So 9 plus 5, so that's 14. You wallop into its fat body, sinks down under your crushing blow, but it is still alive. That's your, that's your turn, stat. Take a shot at it. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh my god, he's got to put on his glasses to see the dice? What in the world? 25 to hit. Yeah, that's a hit. 10, 10, 11, plus 5, 16. uh, 16 uh, slashing. So your weapon slices right into it, and it explodes in, in like a puddle of water. But immediately, the two puddles that had previously joined together form into the two smaller of the spiders. Well, there's uh, something you see every day. So one of the giant spiders now approaches Falzerin, takes a bite of him. Oh, that's going to be a miss with your mage armor, though. Sweet. And uh, the other two little guys go around on Statdorf, attempt to take two quick bites. Uh, one is a six and the other is a 18. So Statdorf takes three piercing damage. And could you make me a constitution saving throw? Cool. Nine. So you will take an additional five poison damage. Oh, dwarf. That hurt. The spider retaliates against Shaft and misses. And the the last of the wolf spiders kind of rounds and runs past Shaft and Sally to the the spool of of the chain. 
and it lashes out at it, kind of knocking against it, and it unlatches what was securing it, and uh, the, the spool, the, the lever keep, just starts to spin and spin as this length of chain is, is dropped and let out into the ocean. And you kind of feel the front of the boat jerk as the anchor attached to this chain has been deployed by this spider. That's a pretty smart spider. A pretty smart spider. <laughs> it's like my worst nightmare. Yeah. Got the heebie-jeebies all up in here. Tell you right now, I killed the spiders in our house. Ballsy, you're up. Okay, so there's one spider right beside me. That's the big boy, right? Yeah. So I'm going to I think I'm going to use uh, Eldritch Blast against this guy. Well, that's unfortunate. That would be a 9. That is a miss. I hold up my finger and just like a, a burst of smoke comes out of it. Your now Eldritch now. Blast does have two beams, so you do get to make another attack roll. But you do have disadvantage because he is within five feet. Uh, that one is 17. That's a hit. Uh, nine points of damage. And this was this being the one that Mia had already pummeled. It too falls and splits into two smaller spiders. Perfect. More spiders. Okay, so I'd like to take I'd like to take a, a bit of a studied look as much as I've got time to, to to look at these spiders and maybe whatever I saw with the cannons and make some sort of check to see if I know what magic is involved in this or how, how they work. Sure, you can make an arcana check. That's eleven. Yeah, that's definitely the cannons are definitely magical in nature and they do seem to have the power to wield some type of conjuration magic but other than that you you've never really seen something like this before okay i don't know anything about any resistances or weaknesses of these spiders you do not so the crew's up um so sally she kind of draws her own sword and and advances on the the spider that went for the anchor and uh, is able to to land a blow but again the, the spider it shimmers using its reaction and takes a liquid form as her sword passes right through Grimby, as the the boat is still moving from the power of the sails, he just kind of cranks the wheel. And now that the anchor's been deployed, you're kind of now pivoting around this anchor point almost. Still have a bit of momentum, though, as as the boat is being significantly reduced in speed as the anchor kind of drags along the the sea floor, trying to catch onto something. Uh, So I assume I noticed the spider release the anchor. Yeah. And would know that that's going to be a problem for us. Yep. So I'm going to run up to the front. Um, Sally's currently battling that spider. She is, yeah. I'm going to try and... Can I bonus action to try and pull the anchor up and still no. attack? No. I didn't think so. I didn't think you are going to let me do that. Yeah. I'm going to try to kill the spider first. It's a more immediate threat. That's a 14 to hit. That's a hit. And that is 7 damage, and that was my first attack. And I will attack again. And that's a 21 to hit. Yeah. With another 5 damage. And your second blow, you're able to, to reduce it to a, a, a puddle of what looks like harmless water as it kind of washes across the deck. Mia. All right, so remind me, calling my hammer back is in action? The, the hammer immediately returns to you. All right, so Mia's got her hammer held high, and she's going to aim it just, like, right over at the boat, at the girl I don't know whose name, but you guys called her Surma. And I aim it right at the boat, and I call lightning. I'm going to channel it, and my target is going to be the leader in the middle, like the glowing fist, uh, Surma. And when I channel Divinity, I get my Destructive Wrath, so I get max lightning or thunder damage. So my storm is summoned, and it's 10 feet tall, 60 foot radius, centered on a point you can see 100 feet above. Oh, okay, so the storm is covering the boat. Each creature within 5 feet of my target point, so within 5 feet of Surma, needs to make a dex saving throw. So my spell save DC is 15. That's awesome. What's yours, Falsy? It's not the size of the spell save, it's the how you use it. 
So you, you blast Surma and this drowned next to her, kind of manning this cannon. So go ahead and roll. So, so you max damage. So what's the max damage? Yeah, so they each get 30 lightning damage. Yeah, the, the drowned failed. Surma did succeed. She takes 15, so she takes half. Okay, so she you see her get blasted by this lightning bolt, and the drown immediately just gets incinerated by the power of this conjured storm. Wow. And I'm uh, and I'm gonna yell out, by the power of Thor, <laughs> in, in a really in a really cheesy way. Good job. So you're gonna stay, you're gonna stay up in the air. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Just kind of fluttering about. So now these three cannons, the the glowing red ones, they fire. Because now the boat has gotten a, a little closer, with just with the momentum of it. Uh, moving towards towards this large ship here. Three revs runs fire a, a solid beam of, of red energy into the hull of the ship. And you guys hear this large crack as it blows a hole in the side of it. The two blue ones, they shoot more, or the aqua ones, they shoot more. Two more spider puddles land on the deck. Oh, boy. And the, the white one, it blasts towards Statdorf. And it, it hits you and wraps you in what looks like this this like silky like web like substance. Uh, would you make me a uh, strength check, please? Okay. Uh, Nineteen. Yeah, and it hits your massive frame, but you're easily able to scrape it off of you and just cast it aside. It had no chance of even entangling you whatsoever. Uh, Shaft, you're up. So now this this water the the port side of the the front of the ship the bow of the ship is starting to to slump now as the rear end of it is kind of lifting into the air as uh, this hole now the hull is taking on water is the uh, ballista still pointing at the other ship yep it is loaded and aimed can i move um without an opportunity attack from the spider and get to the trigger of the ballista yep absolutely and i'm gonna Grab it and fire. All right, who are you aiming at? Well, I'm gonna aim at Surma, but it's a pretty big boat there, so I'm hoping that I hit either her or the boat. So you can add a plus eight to this. Is that, oh, 20. That is a hit, so go ahead and roll uh, 3d10 damage. Woo! As you, wow. you strike true on Surma, still barely recovering from the lightning strike. That would be 14 points of damage on 3d10. You see it. <laughs> pierce her upper body and she goes down. She slumps to, to the deck. Unmoving. Nice. She's, uh, when you say slump, she's dead? She's on the ground. Wow. Immediately beside you, Shakara, you hear the, 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 the chain. It's, it's now taut, but it starts to, to quiver. And climbing up over the side of the deck is the shadow tentacle body drowned climbs up right next to you it's wielding this great sword that it lashes out at you with uh, that's going to be a miss for sure but you see one of its its leg tentacles it lashes out at you again trying to strike at you uh, 17 to hit nope now the spiders round on everybody taking two more swipes at Statdorf wow misses both times two on Falzerin one able to get through the 16. I think I'll use um, shield as a reaction. Absolutely. So the, on, on top of your mage armor, that makes your AC 18? So yeah, that'd be 18. So that's a miss. Two on shaft. Uh, one is a miss. The other is a critical hit. Oh, wonderful. So that is uh, 10 piercing damage. And can you make me a constitution saving throw, please? Oh, crit. Oh, well, I got 20. Plus... One. That is a pass, so you take half damage. So you take two poison damage as it injects its venom into you. Uh, in her rightful initiative spot, Shakara. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm going to cast Searing Smite. So if I manage to hit this tentacle thing, my weapon will flare with a white hot intensity and deal an extra 1d6 fire damage. And it Ooh. will ignite into flames. And the start of its turn, until the spell ends, which is one minute, it must make a con save. If it fails, it takes another 1d6 damage. Nice. And I got a 21 to hit. <laughs> yeah. That is 
14 damage. And then I think I still get another attack because the spell is a bonus action, but the second attack is not... Is that counted as a bonus action? Or is it just I get a second attack? No, it's part of taking the attack action, so you do get a second attack. Oh. My second hit is a 9. That is a miss. But he is on fire, and at the start of this turn, has to make a con save. Okay, great. Statdorf. Uh, Captain, we are being overrun by spiders, and uh, we're taking on water. Should we prep the uh, the lifeboats or keep on fighting? Hey, it may be a time to abandon ship. Okay, with that in mind, uh, we want to move over and start prepping the lifeboats to deploy into the water. Okay. Hey, Stat, remember what I told you. There's not enough boats for all these people. Do we have a door floating around somewhere? There might be some pieces. Maybe two people can fit on it. Maybe just one. <laughs> no, no, no. Only one person can fit <laughs> on the door. Not. We all know that. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> so much like much like the uh, the sail, it's kind of this pulley system of, of ropes. So you use like with one chop of this pulley, you could send the boat down into the water. Okay. Would that be our full action, or we could do something else? Uh, that would be your action. Yeah. Okay. Well, don't don't chop don't chop the rope yet. We got to get in it. Like they can get in and chop the rope with one action. If they wanted to, absolutely. They could barely fit into this boat. <laughs> what would Staffdorf do? Well, no, no. What we're doing is is uh, we're we're prepping the boat in case people need to get on. So we're not jumping in. Oh. We're just we're just lowering it into the water because I assume the it's not a very big boat, so people can easily get from the deck of the boat down onto the boat. Or does do they need to be in the lifeboat before we lower no no it's 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 about a three foot railing from the oh deck. okay so yeah, yeah you got it. you're thinking it is correct for sure okay and the, and the boat's going down so it'll be closer to the water that's true that's true so <laughs> we're gonna start lower i guess there's two lifeboats we're gonna start lowering both of them okay great falls are in falls are in starting to sweat here this is bringing back terrible memories from his past of uh, a ship going down with him on it he quickly looks around, sees that there's multiple spiders on here, but also this massive ship that's attacking us. And I think he's going to make a, a split-second decision and, and think that this big ship in front of us is the biggest threat. So he will cast Fireball, which I think should have enough range to get there, right? 120 feet? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've seen that Selma's gone down. She's got these drowned on either side of her remaining cannons, right? Mm-hmm. If I center it on Selma... Surma. Sorry, Surma. If I center it on Surma, how many people will I be able to get in, in that radius? You'd be able to hit uh, both of both the drown on either cannon uh, uh, to her left and right. Four drown, then? Yep. Okay. And Surma's, Surma's down. Yeah. I'm wondering if it's worth dealing like a, a, a killing blow to, to finish her off. I mean, if you target one of the middle cannons, you get three cannons. Yeah, the cannons on the left are firing which color? They currently are not glowing any color. So do I think that these cannons can choose what color they fire? Have I seen... You've you've seen the same cannons fire two different colors. Okay, okay, so they're multi-purpose. So I'll pick the... Uh, in, instead, I'm going to target the, the set of three cannons on the left of Surma. All right, go ahead and roll your damage. It looks like only two of them actually succeeded. Oh, come on. 15 damage. <laughs> okay. Extremely underwhelming. Your go yeah, well, your, your fireball does engulf all five of these these drowned and, and the cannons, uh, seeming to unaffect the, the machinery at least, but you do inflict some damage to, to a large amount of enemies. Uh, what do you want to move anywhere? You want to run to one of these boats? I I'm gonna provoke if I do that, right? Uh, at least one, yeah, to get by them. But no, uh, I'll stay where I am. Okay. That seems like a bad idea, but all right. <laughs> yeah, could it? Will I provoke if I just take a a side step, like a five foot? If you move away from somebody that's adjacent to you, yeah, it's so provokes. As long as you're still within five feet of the spider, it will not. Yeah, I kind of just want to, like, circle around it a little bit. Can I do that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I'll, I'll take a step just towards the mast and kind of the center of the boat, but still maintaining being adjacent to that one spider. So you see Sally 
getting it almost getting in between Shakara and this 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 drowned master uh, with the with the shadowy legs and she just begins to start working the crank despite the danger around her to, to draw the anchor back up and you see Grimby he's kind of fighting with the wheel up on this top deck hey everyone abandon ye ship save yourselves Mia all right, so Falzerin attacked the the left side of the. I'm, I'm just confused because, is it Surma's left or our? Our left. Okay, and what do those drowned look like? Do they look pretty bad? They look actually not that bad. Okay, Surma's still down. She has not gotten up. Okay, I will call lightning. Because in the spell text, it says that I can call lightning on each of my turns for up to 10 minutes if I maintain concentration. Okay. So I'm going to target the middle cannon on the left. So they're all going to be in range and they need to do a dex saving throw. Uh, Again, two of them pass. So go ahead and roll your damage. All right. So... I rolled eight, so those that pass take four damage, and the rest take eight damage. Which kind of sucks for rolling three d10, like, come on. (laughs) You still still rock some of them, though. And can I choose to use my Thunderbolt Strike? Um, So anyone who took lightning damage has to move ten feet back. That's not restricted to a melee. It's just it's just as long as you do the damage, you blast them back. Yep. So at sixth level, when I deal lightning damage to a large or smaller creature, I can choose to push them ten feet away from me. So get them off those cannons. Nice. Very Smart. nice. I should have done it with Surma last time too, but I forgot. So. Are you again staying in the air? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna float a little bit closer to the rowboats. Um, just because I can. I've got seven more rounds to fly, so... Okay. And recovering from your, your, your blowback here, they immediately walk back up to these cannons, and you see, again, one of them... Uh, well, there's only two on uh, one of them now, so they start to fiddle again and spin this back dial they begin to glow red again as it seems uh, they do take uh, a bit of time to charge and actually the the cannons on the to the right of Surma's motionless body do the same shaft you're up okay I'm gonna after I shot um, I'm gonna look around and I'll go back and I'll see that uh, that Statdorf is is lowering down the uh, the life boats and I'll go Hey, the two-headed guy's got a good idea. I'm going to charge and run and dive into one of the boats. Why don't you go ahead and make me an acrobatics? Uh, 14. Yeah, you clear the railing and, and land a little little rough onto this little boat, but it does kind of rock it. Some seawater sloshes over the edge as you disrupt it, but you are in, in the first lifeboat. I'll go, jump in, big guy! I need somebody to row this thing! And the shadow tentacle again just continues to, to lash out at Shakara. And he has to make a con save also. Right, he's on fire. Ooh, he fails that. It's a d6 of damage, which I rolled a 6. Yeah, as this fire it kind of spreading across his body, it seems to barely phase him. But he attacks you with his greatsword, he gets a, a, a 20 to hit. That hits. Uh, that's only 5 slashing. And again, this uh, tentacle, a leg tentacle lashes out at him, at you, sorry, uh, for 23 to hit. That hits. So this time you take 7 necrotic damage. Ugh. And again, I'd be getting you to roll constitution saving throws, but paladins are immune to disease. Yes, I am. Statdorf, you're up. All right, little man, get out the way. We're going to climb overboard. There ain't no sense staying on this thing. If these people can't figure out, it's going down. Well... We ain't going to be able to help them in the future. Will both boats hold everybody? 
Uh, well, <laughs> the second bow can hold up to four people. Come on, Statdorf, I need you down here. Captain always goes down with his ship, so not the crew. I'm climbing in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Grimby. <laughs> We go over the rail. It's right there. Let me know if we need to do a check or anything. But um, No, definitely with your size, you easily step over this three-foot rail. Do we need to check and see if we land on the little guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What kind of question is that? Shaft could probably make a, 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 an acrobatics check to avoid getting crushed. <laughs> Son of a bitch. That's a 12. You narrowly avoid being used as toilet paper, as the <laughs> stat dwarf's <laughs> large butt smashes into this, this rowboat, nearly capsizing it with, with their size, but still steady in, in the water. So that was basically a movement. I don't know if you wanted to push like away from the boat or... Nobody else will fit in this boat? No, with, with, your, with your frame... Barely. Luckily, Shaft is a halfling, so he's able to fit in with you. All right, Hevo, here we go. Pushing off. So we move away on the on the other boat. We're missing one space. Well, we'll come back for Grimby. <laughs> Shakara, you're up. Uh, first, I'll say, Sally, head for the boat. Get out of here, and I will uh, attack the Tentacle Man. And that is a twenty-two to hit. Mm-hmm for the first attack, and that is... Oh, you know what? I think I'll smite him, too. Just because I can. 14 points of damage, and then I'll attack him again, bring my sword around, and try and slice off some of those tentacles. That's a 13. Is that hitting? No. And I'll miss, and then I will uh, risk an attack of opportunity and run for the boat. All right. You will take it. Uh, 19 to hit. No, it misses. Okay. These spiders, now kind of only Sally and Falzerin and the captain left on deck here. Oh no, these spiders advance on Sally. And five of them surround her. Oh, Sally. One does leap on her as she's fending it and sinks their fangs into her. And two will advance on Falzerin. Uh, wow, those are both misses with your main drummer. Beautiful. Falzern, you're up. Grimby, are you getting off the ship with us? Let's go. Hey, is Stadorf. He's correct. Captain goes down. Make sure the crew gets off safe first. Grimby, come on. This this ship is... It's it's not worth dying over. I won't be leaving without Sally. Okay. Um, to, I've never disengaged before. Can I disengage from the spider that I'm right beside and then be able to not provoke an attack to move over to that. Yeah, if you disengage, you negate all uh, opportunities of attack. Just take your action. Yeah, so I'll do that, and then I'll move over and, and try to climb down into the rowboat with Mia and Shakara. All right, you can get down there. And uh, now it is the crew. You see Sally, she kind of sloughs off this spider, and she does her best sprinting to the boat, able to get in with you, and Seeing that she saved Grimby makes his way down. He's wielding his great axe and he is able to slice into one of these spiders, but again it just turns to liquid and his attack is ineffective. He is able to make it right to the railing, not quite far enough to get into the boat. Mia, you're at the top. As everyone is busy escaping, Mia realizes that she had chucked her amulet down on the boat. <laughs> If my fly speed is 30, can I, like, fly down and grab it and then fly back up, or...? No. So, how many spiders would there be if I moved right over here next to Falzerin? Just one? There's two there. Okay. So, Mia's gonna fly down, and can she just grab her amulet, or...? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then Mia is going to cast Inflict Wounds on the spider closest to Falzerin. Okay. So, I need an attack roll for this one. 14. That's it. Okay, so this spider gets 3d10, and that's 12. 12 damage. Now I roll higher. This necrotic damage you inflict on this spider just obliterates it, and it explodes in, in a splash of, of water. 
Now all six of these glowing red cannons, they fire on this boat once more. Twice the impact on a half as strong boat is not very well for this <laughs> for the structure as it completely obliterates it and the deck beneath your feet Mia and Grimby's it buckles and breaks apart as the rest of you are able to already pushing your rowboats away away from the main vessel and something inside of the boat it erupts and, ex and literally explodes and it sends this huge wave crashing into the rowboats and sends Grimby flying and me at least with your wings you're able to, to right yourself but you will take some damage from the explosion uh, make me a dexterity saving throw please Mia. That's 11 not great. That is uh, a fail so you will take 19 fire damage from the explosion Mia no and the sudden force in the water it just creates this tidal wave that washes over the rowboats completely submerging them and everyone everything goes dark and i think that's a decent place to stop oh what awesome <laughs> i was just about to take out the other ship oh yeah <laughs> so a big thank you marty and tony for joining us so why don't you guys uh tell us who you are and, and where people can find you and what you guys do Oh, sure. Well, we have a uh, a board gaming uh, podcast called Rolling Dice and Taking Names and uh, been around for, gosh, we just celebrated our seventh anniversary. And yeah. uh, if you want to, you can go check us out. You can, our website's RollDiceTakeNames.com or we're on uh, iTunes. Uh, anything else, Tony? Not that I can think of. Be sure to follow us also on Twitter and Instagram and all that other good stuff. And what we really do is... Talk about board games, lawnmowers, and food. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you uh, guys enjoyed your time with us. We certainly oh, yeah. loved Great having you. Well, yes. Thank you so much. But now, what's going to happen to Stat Door? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> You're going to have to tune in, listener, to figure out what happens to Stat Door. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope he's, I'm going to be upset if he doesn't survive this. <laughs> we don't have a very good track record with NPCs. Oh, great, great. Nobody's died <laughs> yet. Not, no, not guest NPCs. Yeah. I guess they've mm. all lived. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. I mean, Leland's going to have to try his best to practice your voices. And uh... <laughs> Now, when Bonacor was on, he sang us a song. Are you guys up for that? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> incorrect. Be bad. You don't want that. Was he a bard? No, he was a... He was a... Uh, a uh, ale salesman. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, of, course, a, yes. of course, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there was a pitch or two about some types of ales. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, just, that just happened to sound exactly like Stronghold Games, I bet. <laughs> at, at his bar, the Heaven and Ale? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, thank, thank you again. Yeah, thank you guys. No, uh, happy, happy to do it. No time, no problem at all. Thank you for having us. Lots of fun. Thank you. And that's our show. If you're not already, be sure to follow us at Incorrigible Par on Twitter, Incorrigible Party on Instagram and Facebook, and you can go to IncorrigibleParty.com for world lore and PC information. And we've recently started adding some maps there as well. Incorrigible Party is generously sponsored and made possible by Critical Hit Design. For any of your design needs, visit criticalhitdesign.com. All ambient sound and music is provided by Tabletop Audio. And our intro and outro music was created by Josh Jarvis. You can reach him at jamesmercymusic at gmail.com. Happy adventuring! <laughs>